Hello everybody, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to back Sweden while doing a closed transfer. So we have our keg with our cider that's been completed. This has been a pressurized fermentation. So we're trying to minimize the amount of oxygen to transfer from this keg into this one. This keg has been uh, emptied, sanitized, and cl empty, cleaned, and sanitized. And now we need to go ahead and back Sweden uh, our cider. So we can stabilize our cider in one of two ways. The first way is to stabilize the keg we're transferring it to and then transfer to another keg that has the back sweetening in it. Or we can open up this keg, stabilize this keg, and then transfer into this keg with the back sweetening. Um, I preferred the, the second method because this allows us to use fewer number of transfers. So we're gonna open it up and take a look inside of it. And I'll show you what this should look like. You're gonna see a lot of CO2 just releasing from solution when we open it up. Oh, not nearly as loud as I thought it would be. Good. All right, CO2 has been purged. And now we can go ahead and open this keg. So there's still a bit of back pressure. So just push it down and open it up. You should see a bunch of bubbles. Ooh, actually, you're going to see the uh, cranberry skins up there too. All those cranberries have been fully extracted. It's pretty wonderful. So because we fermented in this keg, we have to keep in mind that we have all of the gunk in here from this keg. So uh, when we move stuff over, we get to clean this keg out, which is why I prefer the method of doing a single transfer rather than doing two transfers. All right, to stabilize, we are going to put our five Camden tablets and our uh, five teaspoons of potassium sorbate just directly into here. It might cause some foaming. Overall looks pretty good. Let that uh, mix into the solution. And we're gonna go ahead and put this lid back on and uh, put some CO2 on top of it and let it go. Now this is going, what I really like to do now is give this cider a sample to see how the sweetness is. That'll gauge how much of back sweetening I'm going to put in it. I've done this, uh, this recipe before and I like about a half a gallon of cranberry apple juice as back sweetening but your individual tastes may vary. So if you want to do more of a controlled experiment, use this sample to add in uh, your back sweetening and see how it tastes. Uh, everybody has a different palate. This turns into a semi-dry cider when I use about a half gallon of uh, cran apple juice, but your individual palate may, uh, may say you like something different. So experiment. And uh, the good part about home brewing is you get to make stuff for you. So you make it how you like it, not how somebody else likes it. We've gone ahead and closed our keg back up. So now what we need to do is add some CO2 to the top of this, uh, purge off any oxygen and let it sit for a day while the Camden tablets and potassium sorbate dissolve into here. Uh, stock being yeast reproduction and ending their ability to metabolize sugar normally. About two days have passed since I added the Camden tablets and potassium sorbate. And now it's time to prep this keg, which is going to be our receiving keg for uh, back sweetening. So this keg has been sanitized with a sanitization fluid inside of it. We're going to push that sanitization fluid back out of it into our star sand keg, which we have ready to go just in case we need sanitization ever. So we're going to move that via this transfer line into this keg. And in that process, this transfer line is going to be sanitized by this keg, moving the fluid to this keg. And it's also going to be purged of all the star sand because of all the CO2 being pushing out uh, from this keg to this keg. So once the sanitization line has been emptied and purged and uh, sanitized, we're going to go ahead and use this to this keg to uh, be our back sweetening keg. This keg has been pressurized to 12 pounds per square inch. This keg has been vented to atmosphere to do another little test pressure release and then leave the pressure relief valve outside of it. And when I attach this keg to this keg via the outlines of the fluid transfer uh, side of the, uh, the keg, it's going to push via head pressure all the liquid out of here into this keg until it reaches an equalization point, which due to the pressure inside here is going to create a vacuum within this keg and then cause the atmospheric pressure to leak out, pushing this fluid from here to here. Uh, it's gonna be relatively quick. There's not much sanitization fluid inside of this keg. Let's go ahead and start that process. And we'll know it's done when we start hearing uh, CO2 being pushed out. And we here we go. Here we go. 
Immediately fluid starts to transfer. And there it goes. We are pushing out the remaining CO2 volume. You can hear the air start to leak out of this. And now our tube has been filled with CO2 and it has been sanitized. We're gonna go ahead and remove this. There we go. We have transferred all of the uh, star sand out of this keg and into this keg. This keg, uh, this line has now been purged of star sand and we are ready to use this sanitized purged line to transfer between our keg with our uh, ferment in it that's been pressurized into this keg. So the next step in our process is going to be uh, filling this with our uh, back sweetening. In this case, will be cran apple juice. We have our keg that has our back sweetening in it over here on the right, and we have our keg that has our fermented cider over here on the left. We're gonna to wanna to move the fluid from this keg, the, the hard cider from this keg into our keg that's been back sweetened. So a couple things we need to do ahead of time. We need to pressurize this keg now, and then we need to put a spunding valve on the air side of this keg to allow it to slowly add into this keg and minimize the amount of foaming that we have when we transfer from our cider keg, our, our hard cider keg, into our back sweetening keg. This will be the keg that we serve out of too. So in order to do a pressurized transfer between kegs, we need to add pressure to this end, our keg that we are pushing liquid from, into the keg that we are transferring to. So in order for us to not move fluid from uh, our keg that is uh, back sweetened, we have to make sure that the pressure of this keg is less than the pressure of this keg. We're also gonna reach an equalization point where it pushes fluid back over to, uh, back over into this keg. So the, the idea here is that uh, our spunding valve allows us to have a controlled pressure release and you'll hear this uh, kind of hissing sound while we are filling this keg. That's coming from the spunding valve doing, making it so that there, the flow is less than if it was just going vented straight to atmosphere. I see this mistake a lot with a lot of home brewing um, pages. Uh, and people are always confused about why they're getting foaming. It's because uh, they're not controlling the pressure going into this keg. Alternatively, uh, instead of a spunding valve like this, you can also have a, uh, uh, a spunding valve that has a blow off tube so that if you get up too high, it just blows off into a uh, bottle such as this one. Um, my spunding valve with the blow off tube is currently being used on a pressure ferment right now, so I can't do that method. But if you have that available, it's a good, a good hedge against uh, having a bunch of liquid being spouted out of your spunding valve end, which is no fun for anybody. So uh, just keep that in mind while you're doing this transfer. As mentioned before, we are going to pressurize this uh, back Sweden keg. It's being pressurized to about 12 pounds. It's also going to be the transfer pressure. But the spunding valve that we have over here, the spunding valve has been set to 10 pounds. So once we get this, keg over here pressurized. Uh, we're going to go ahead and purge the top of the oxygen to prevent the atmosphere for uh, yeast to start over a, uh, a situation where they can start reproducing again. Uh, even though the potassium sorbate and the Camden tablets have scavenged all the oxygen, we have un unintentionally introduced oxygen into this vessel. So now we're going to purge it out. And then going to do one to two good purges. I like to do a little bit more than that just to make sure that we have a nice good layer of CO2 on top of our uh, back sweetening uh, uh, juice in here. And then that should be good. We're just gonna let this uh, go until we hear it stop, um, stop the air stop going right now. And we're just gonna take this off and we're going to put our spunding valve onto this keg on the gas line. Oh my goodness, this is on. Be good there. All right. 
spunding valve on the gas line. There we go. Uh, spunding valve is currently reading five pounds. As we do our transfer, this spunding valve pressure is going to go up, but it's been set to relieve at 10 pounds. So we're going to see a relief when that happens. But we know that this keg is pressurized. So that's a good check to make sure we do before we put stuff into it, is to make sure it has a pressure seal on it. So we're gonna go ahead and do our transfer now. Okay, so we have our transfer line that has been purged and sanitized. And then we also have our regulated line over here that is set to 12 PSI. We're going to push from this keg into the other keg. In order to do that, we're going to hook this up to the gas inline. I apologize, I'm gonna to have to move these pegs around to get this in the correct spot. So we're gonna go over here. And over here, there we go. That's a good keg. Good keg. I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the gas inline. And then we're going to, once we hook up the liquid line to both sides, we're gonna immediately see liquid start to flow. So let's time it in three, two, and one. And there we go. We got fluid. And as you can see, when we're pushing through here, we're not getting any more oxygen coming back into it or CO2 coming back into this tank. That's how we know we have a good transfer being set up. So this is the exact process that I use when I'm back sweetening cider, but I want to minimize the oxygen introduction. So uh, use this process uh, to your advantage whenever you're going to be doing your back sweetening of pressurized fermentation.